a lot of pointless content has been made. Promoted idi idiocracy. It promoted nothingness. This well, is fun. I'm gonna sit here and scroll all day. If that's not a gateway for them to go into really bad addictions that are gonna hurt them for the rest of their lives, I don't know what is. Podcast 13, lucky number 13, we actually are here. Yeah. We're, we're a teenager now. 13 is the number. It's the number that comes after 12. Thank you for the insight, Ben. A lot of our viewers may not have known that. And that is because social media has rot, rotted their brains. Dude, so many people are so stupid nowadays. It's, it's directly because of social media. It has a massive, huge part to play and why we are where we are as a society. And it stems from one of the greatest inventions that ended up just hurting us being Vine. Ooh, that's a hot take right there. It's a hot take, but I think it's deep down everyone knows that Vine had a huge impact on how we view social media. That is the first platform to produce short-term content and it was constant. Seven second videos, boom, boom, boom. Boom. It would not stop, and you can be in there for hours. That's where death scrolling came from. No, that's very true. I think short-form content has rotted the way that we view stuff, just anything anymore. If you take a look at content that came out of the 80s, like movies, even in the 90s, maybe early 2000s as well, they used to be much slower paced than they are now. Yeah, like movies nowadays, when you watch them, it's constant action. Like it's constant joke. It's constant quip. Like there's no sort of like actual story. Well, the story has taken second place to the just the constant loop of like action that's needed to make people's retention stay with the movie, right? And I think a lot of that is directly because of what Vine did in the early 2010s, where they created a six second clip. Or six, seven, six or seven seconds. Six, six or seven clip, seconds remember. where you gave a content creator, you have seven seconds to capture an audience's uh, mind, right? Capture that, keep it there for seven seconds, and then move on to the next seven second clip. And so people did that, and they were really good at it. Turns out we are really good at catching people's attention. Now, the trick is, are we good at keeping people's attention? And that's where you trans... It translated into YouTube videos, though, too. So we're, we're going to get into how, how this has progressed. The invention of Vine, Vine into our society, changed so many different things. So people wanted short-form content now. It's, oh, this is quick. This is fun. They didn't want to sit and actually watch a whole video. They wanted just to see what's going on. And then it also made everyone realize everyone else in the world is just as weird as they are. So you watch this, like like that, that one Vine, that dude, like, flips his covers under his feet. He goes... Oh, well, I do that too. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. We're this like, wow, that's interesting. And this is something it connected us as humans that we've never been connected before. It, which that I would just look at as a positive. Okay, we're all normal. The struggles we're going through are normal. And then it also did something different that a lot of people don't realize. It's the first time that somebody random could become insanely famous, and for a very small moment. Like, the, they were literal seven seconds of fame, right? That's what Vine brought on was the possibility that you could just have seven seconds of fame, and then you could monetize that by having another seven seconds of fame. Because it's a lot easier to be famous when all that being famous relies upon is your ability to capture someone's attention for seven seconds. And it turns out that's really easy to do. A lot of people can do that. Can everyone do it? No, not, not at all. And this is where... You know, the problem with like algorithms and TikTok and di different things, there's a lot more factors that come into because when you open the playing field to everyone, then everyone floods in and it just creates so much content because there's so many different people. Because you think about the old days of YouTube or even just the old days, like in just general, like Hollywood, you know, you had to be someone, you had to have a, a skill to make a movie, you had to be a skill to be a writer, right? You still do to this very day. You need a skill that brings you into that industry. What skill does it take you to get onto social media? Nothing. And then, well, I wouldn't say that, but it, if you look at a lot yeah. of the videos, there's nothing. They, they provide zero content. Content. It's just they scream, they do something crazy. Nowadays, nowadays, nowadays for sure. That's yeah. all. That's a, that's a lot of what Vine was too. Like the oh, I dropped my croissant. There's nothing creative. <laughs> there's nothing funny about that. Free right? shavakadoo. Right. Like it's just it's just 
it it promoted idi- idiocracy. It promoted just nothingness. Well, it promoted provocativeness. All right, this is a point that we hit on last podcast, and I think it's just a really important point in general. It's like provocative moments go viral because they're outrageous, and people like to watch stuff that is outrageous. 100%, and that's what Vine started to do. Mm-hmm. It started to, to taint our minds to say, oh, wait, that's crazy. That's funny. How can I? What can I do next? How can I push this farther? And it, it's, it's never ending. We're seeing that to this day. And you mentioned ho- like how Hollywood used to be. Everyone, when they were younger, I want to be a movie star. I want to be a famous singer. Move to Nashville, whatever. We saw from Vine, everyone's like, I want to be a famous v- person on Vine. A Viner, whatever. I don't know what they were called. Famous Viner. Viner so yeah. everyone moved into to Los Angeles. You could do it from your uh, living room. You could start out there. You could. But then they would, they would move to Los Angeles, build up these like like hype houses or whatever it was first time we ever really saw this phenomenon and people all little kids like i just want to be a fam- famous viner that's all that's their whole life goal is just to be famous and go viral which is it's just insane one of the big problems that has come from it we touched on it a little bit earlier in this podcast was that it started to rot our brains and i think part of the reason that it started to do that was because humanity has really in the course of history has never been confronted with the problem of like short attention spans. Because throughout the history of everything, it's taken a long time to do something. I mean, back in the day to create a book, the process to do that took years, in some cases, depending on what you were writing. I mean, like the monks in Europe during the medieval centuries, they would spend their entire lives writing a Bible and then painting with like pictures and stuff like that. They would literally dedicate their entire life to writing one book, not to hit on the Bible or anything like that, but the creating, uh, the, what goes into creating a short, right, on TikTok or even Vine back in the day, the technology, everything that brings in there, it's a much larger amount of different things that have to come together for that thing to be created, right? Modern technology has allowed for just very, very convenient, easy putting stuff together. Everything is very easy to put together. And so, like we said, it allowed a lot of people to basically just flood in and create a whole new industry, a billion dollar industry, because that's what it is nowadays. Yeah. Were some of these people really, should they really have been in the industry? You know, the the argument could be made that a lot of pointless content has been made. 100%. I mean, the internet, when it was invented, it's like, wow, you can, you have all this wealth of knowledge at your fingertips. We are going to become the smartest generation ever. We're going to be able to invent things that no one ever could even imagine, right? People talked about the going into the 2000s. They're like, we're flying cars, all this other stuff. We have none of that because we're to become distracted with our phones, with the internet. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is fun. I'm going to sit here and scroll all day. And they don't create anything. They don't put in any work to make anything of themselves. You talk about convenience. Everything's convenient. They don't want anything that's inconvenient. Mm-hmm. Think about how we shop now. You don't have to leave your house. How we order food. You don't have to leave your house. It's all at the finger uh, at your fingertips. With technology is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love technology. But there comes a point where you have to live as a normal human being and just fend for yourself and get better every single day. You could almost say it's inconveniently convenient, right? Because what the convenience has done is completely inconvenient for humanity. Because it's really evil because... You know what's really interesting to me? I was watching a video today, actually, and a guy was talking about how people are more than willing to watch a 30-minute video on YouTube. They're still more than willing to watch a a two-and-a-half-hour podcast on something. People are more than willing to watch a movie that's three hours long. Why is that? The point is, like, people have not lost their ability for their long attention spans. People still have that ability to have a long attention span. You can watch anything you want, if you're interested in it. And the really terrible thing that modern social media has done is that it doesn't necessarily feed you stuff that you're interested in. When you go and click on shorts or you go on TikTok, you have no idea what you're going to get. And odds are when you actually go on these apps to scroll down and you scroll for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes or however long you're wasting, do you remember anything that you actually just watched? No. Out of the, you probably, when you're scrolling that much, you could scroll past theoretically 500 videos. Easily. And maybe you remember one of them because you thought that it was really funny. And that's a huge waste of time. I mean, just imagine, like, across the entire world, people scrolling for hours and hours and hours combined, right? The entire day, there's people scrolling. 
and maybe people remember one video that they saw that day. It's it's sad. We're wasting so much time. Do you see those those like we're robots attached to our phone? Like that's yeah. our master is our phone. And like we said, this is something that Vine started. Where Vine started the algorithm of giving people videos that they didn't necessarily want to see, and just basically like throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall, a bunch of poop at the wall, hoping something sticks. Right? Yeah. You're getting a lot of crap thrown at you in the hopes that the algorithm will find one thing that will stick on you and that will be good enough to bring you back into the algorithm the next day. Yeah, it's it's crazy and when when this all happened you had these certain people that came really famous, right? So like David Dobrik, like Amanda Cherney and uh, King Batch, right? From oh, yeah. from from Vine. They they were they were they started off just like the provocative random videos You're like oh, that's kind of interesting. Then they kept making videos, they kept pushing it, right? Good for them. They were putting in a lot of hard work. And then they started making kind of skits, and then they were everywhere. You could not stop watching them. They became really famous from that, and then they made the transition over to, like, Instagram. If you if you remember Instagram after Vine, after Vine was done, it was full of just these small group of people making videos. They were horribly annoying. They Like, the, the first couple of weeks, it was like, ah, kind of funny, then it's overplayed. But they were being watched by so many people that you had these, like, uh, you had people in Hollywood. They're like, oh, these people are insanely popular. Everyone must love them. They're they're making great skits. They have to be good in, in movies. So they tried putting them in movies, and they all flopped because they're not true actors because acting is like it's an art. You have to put time and effort into it, and they – It just wasn't their skill. It wasn't, and it was so – if you look back at some of the movies, it's hilarious because, like, they're in it. I mean, Logan and Jake Paul came from from Vine. They both were on TV shows garbage they're great at what they do but they are garbage acting and logan will admit it just because yeah i was horrible that's why he doesn't do it anymore yeah well this is something that vine really set the precedent for was just allowing a social media that people could just throw anything onto it actually this is one of the things that vine got a lot of you know hate for was the fact that a lot of people were using vine you know from probably 2014 to 2017, Vine was one of the most used apps in the world. And everyone was on Vine. Everyone had an account. But the problem with it was that it was not good for discovering new creators. And one of the things that ultimately hit Vine really hard was that Vine would highlight certain creators. And the ones that were popular from day one were the ones that ended up basically taking over the whole, like, your search page and stuff like that. Like, it was impossible to find new stuff. And Vine just started to get old because people were just seeing the same faces over and over again. And then those same content creators wanted a huge amount of money from Vine to be able to stay on their platform. Vine didn't have the money to pay them, and Vine ultimately crashed as a result of it. But YouTube still does this really well, where YouTube, YouTube rewards really good content creation. TikTok, and I, I would arguably say TikTok, Instagram, and... Maybe we'll say Snapchat, too, because I think all of them can probably be thrown into this. TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat all rely on just people to just feed it content. It just mm -hmm. gets fed content. It doesn't matter how good or bad it is because people are just programmed to go on those apps every single day no matter what because they use it for social activities and stuff like that. And that search page is just filled to the brim, just filled to the absolute brim that you're just going to find everything and anything because it's just fed youtube on the other hand has a much better feature with like virality where good clips and good content will surface to the top no matter what because people will go to youtube and they understand that i can watch a video with a good attention span and you know you can use the, the shorts feature is whatever right like that's the same thing as all the other apps in general the video feature in youtube is still way above those other ones because it rewards good content creation 100 percent. and even the shorts feature is way different than instagram and, and tiktok now it's you when you're watching the shorts you actually get good content it's well-made content it's like meant to be there they they, they made it and like all right i'm gonna post it on youtube shorts where tiktok once tiktok came around everyone went on it because they thought like oh this is this is vine 2.0 they're super excited and they had longer videos, and now they've, I think you can even put up like a 10-minute video now. It's just absolutely insane. It's just not what the platform is meant for. But no, they're, it's weird. It's just, it's every, it was, again, everyone was on there. You didn't have to have any skill or talent. You just needed to record a video of you dancing, yeah. and then, bam, there you go. And it's, okay, 
where's this going? And then you have these people like like Charlie D'Amelio, just a and she was she was like way too young to be on the app, dancing oh. in front of all these guys, the, the highest I think she had like a hundred and something million followers, just dancing. She might be a talented person, but when you look at what the content she's providing and how she's supposed to be like helping society, there's it's nothing. It's just hurting people. Not okay. I'm gonna say it's not hurting people, but it's not helping people grow. It's just wasting their time yeah one of the kind of like paradoxes i suppose you could say or like contradicting figures of social media like you know it's supposed to connect everyone which sounds like a good thing but at the same time it's it's not really a good thing like certain groups of people should be separated like when you have a platform the main people that are on it are children beneath the age of 18 and in a lot of cases beneath the age of 15 right and then some of your biggest stars on the platform are all minors and stuff like that. Like, who's watching their content? Anyone and everyone. So we're gonna jump in a rabbit hole here. So there's people proposing laws saying that you have to be a certain age to be on social media, right? So a lot of apps like, hey, yeah, I'm 18 or yeah, I'm 15 or whatever, but actually enforcing that. Some people are against it, it's like, oh, free will, whatever. If the government's already gonna be stepping itself so deep into everything going on, right? Wearing your seatbelt, driving, like it's supposed to be doing your own thing. They need to be protecting people from social media at a young age. Your brain's still forming. You don't know what's real or not. And you're getting fed this, a lot of just fake embellished stuff. And you don't, you can't, you don't know what's right or wrong. You haven't made any opinions about the world yet. And you're getting it formed for you. And it's really sad to see. And then you also mentioned you have these really, really young kids on here. Young kids dancing on TikTok. And then you have these old men watching these videos. It's disgusting. It's scary yes. to see. They. It's a huge problem right now. That is now it's getting a little bit more press. It was mentioned on Joe Rogan with um, Theo Vaughn talking about predators. Mm-hmm. And so where I guess this is where we're at right now. We're talking about these these people who are trying to, to steal innocence. That's that's the only way I can describe it, and it's disgusting. They're, they mentioned, oh, no, it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, it's kind of getting bred out. I would argue that the, the difference, it's getting fed right now. It is more than we've ever seen. They have the ability to co- connect with these young kids using social media, and their parents don't see. It's like, they're, it's like they're sending their kids to Walmart by themselves to sit in the toy store or the toy area. Why aren't parents noticing how bad this is? Yeah. Do you remember the how all the family videos had like the back section, right? Like you had family videos, which has all the good videos, but then like you don't go into the back of the store. I didn't know why for the longest. Right. But the problem with the internet is that the internet is like a family video store, but it doesn't have a wall to separate the back part of the store from the front of the store. And the security that it takes for a child to just go to the back of the store is very minimal it's unbelievably easy for a child and like we said like you were talking about how old people are watching some of these young girls on social media the problem is that it also goes both ways right because you have young boys watching these semi older streamers we'll say like you know they're they're young adults young adult streamers that have young adult actresses on their streams if that's not a gateway for young men and young women in some cases, if that's not a gateway for them to go into really bad addictions that are going to hurt them for the rest of their lives, I don't know what is. It's terrible. We're going to call a spade a spade. It feeds their addictions. Yeah. We and you ask anybody. You're ignorant if you don't see this connection. You're giving young kids access to everything. You can find anything and everything on the internet which is an awesome part about it because you can learn so many things. But if you want to use it for bad, you can. And the temptation to use it for bad is always there. Any, any, so we grew up Roman Catholic. All our friends are really good Catholic men. Any, any of our friends at some point of time have, has deleted social media from their phone. Because even if you're not looking for it, the algorithm always tries to push it just in case. You'll notice well, you're you're scrolling at nighttime, only at nighttime, certain kind of videos show up. And it's for a reason. And you know it's ha- happening to these people who may fall into that temptation. And they're doing it for a reason. They be, they're creating 
They're creating literal slaves to their bodies. Was it Hugh Hefner that said sex sells? I think that was him. I mean, he was right. Sex sells because like we like we said before, provocativeness is what drives algorithms, right? You're always looking to one up the last video. You have to one up or you're not yeah. going to go viral. And like we said, like this is how Vine starts the whole trend is Vine like you create a viral moment and it could be someone literally sliding into an oven. Now, how on earth do you top that? Like you had a video of yourself sliding into the oven and it like shatters. Do you remember that video? Uh, there's there's so many videos and trying to like I think I've seen so, so many, many ovens. Yeah. But I mean, like you know, you get the idea. Like you slide into the oven and break it, or like a table breaks in half when oh, someone drops a watermelon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like, you know, how do you top that? By doing something even more outrageous than what you originally became viral for, and. If you're a person who got famous for dancing, you know, how do you achieve the next tier? Yeah, right? only, so, yeah, you're, you're dancing. You're doing a cute little fun dance, which, like, a lot of young girls do that. Like, that's, like, they do the handshake. Like, they're just, they, they're different things, right? There's nothing right? wrong with it. No, 100%. It's yeah. awesome. That's just how they build camaraderie. That's how they grow, grow as people. But then they want, they see attention. They get attention, right? Social media is a gateway to give people attention that they might have not gotten before. Yeah. So they have to dress a certain way. They go, oh, wait a minute. I just got more attention. Wait, my followers just increased. Okay, I did this and that, that did that. Oh, wait, so I'm going to continue to do that. What's going to happen? And it keeps going. We mentioned um, in the in podcast third 12 about streamers and what they now how they've progressed and who they're having on now. From the progression from Vine to Instagram to TikTok, when you keep having – to one up yourself because you're getting more attention. That's given certain kinds of people, we'll say people that do corn, who like corn, right? Who make corn. Because we have to be kind of see if we're not monetized yet, but just in case. <laughs> people that make corn, they're like, hey, I can come out here now. Right? We talked about how Logan Paul has kind of started having those kind of people on their on his videos and it made it normal. And then they then they got their social media. Their social media got boosted. They realized, oh, wait, I'm making money from this now. OK, how can I make more money? And now they're able to sell subscriptions to themselves like they've never had before. They've created a multi-billion dollar industry over selling the worst possible thing for men and for society as Like a whole. we said, outrageous content gets outrageous views. And that's really the key thing here. And But the question that no one really ever stopped to ask was, is outrageous content good for us? And I would say that the answer to that is pretty resounding no. Outrageous content is not good for us. Find a way to basically surround ourselves with good content that uplifts us, right? A book... Books used to sell not because they were outrageous, but usually because they were edifying in some sort of manner, right? Like, you would buy a book to learn something. I would go to watch a movie because I wanted to see what good writers could come up with. Something with, like, a really good message, right? Like, Twelve Angry Men is a fantastic movie. Casablanca is a fantastic movie. The Godfather, fantastic movie. Like, you know, what are the core messages of these films that they were creating way back in the day? As opposed to creating a movie like The Avengers, where it's just about superheroes, right? Like, there's not, it's not the same. And it's, it, the same goes for how content is made today. Is content made because, and I'm not saying this, this is not a generalization, because I generally do believe that there are good content creators out there that want to create good content. And they want to create a good audience. They want to do something. Want to, they want to uplift their audience into some sort of knowledge. But for the most part, most content creators have found, and this is what the algorithm rewards, is the people that create outrageous content by bringing up outrageous scenarios. Yeah. Like Speed. Like Aiden Ross. How did Andrew Tate get big? He said outrageous things on the internet that no one would normally think about, Right. Some of the stuff that he said was just, you know, you can you just look at his clips and you're like, OK, this is just so outrageous. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. And then it was then he would like put out something that some people might agree with. And then you had people go, oh, wait, I agree with this man. But right. then he also said all these other crazy things. And it's really sad to see we have the ability to learn and grow so much as, as a human like society. But we are just fed and constantly want nothing. 
within this this content. We just want a we hate our lives so much that we just have to sit on our phones and just do go like this all the time and just watch nothing for hours, wasting so much time. And it's really sad. And a lot of these content creators, because like everyone's driven by something, right? A lot of people are driven by money because you have the ability to make a lot of money on social media. And we talked about this. Well, going the route we're going is not an easy route. We want to stay true to ourselves, true to our values, and hopefully impact one person, right? If we can change one life, we are successful. We could easily go do what the Nelk boys do. Go do what Speed does. Just be crazy, outrageous, say random stuff, get in fights, get kicked out of Walmart, and become famous. It's not hard. It's insanely easy. No, once you give up the fact that you're if – you, if you're okay with being seen as a crazy person on the internet, you can make a living from it. How do you – that's how Alex Jones has done. Well – <laughs> don't diss my man Alex Jones <laughs> I'm just kidding we'll see if I can cancel <laughs> oh we're cancelled sorry <laughs> um, over there. you mentioned in the last podcast or we talked about it I don't think we didn't mention it directly but people making this kind of content don't understand the repercussions the ramifications of what they're actually doing they're making this content oh it's funny I'm getting money this is awesome but then you, you're you're killing yourself you you have you have life for like five years, and then you're done, right? Look what happened. Fousey. Fousey Tube was huge. One of the biggest uh, channels. He had like one of the, like I think he won like awards like on the streaming awards like best YouTube channel. Gone. Tried to make a comeback with like these streamer people, but he's just so mentally just messed up. I feel so bad for him. He's a shell of who he was. Do you remember in the beginning times of YouTube that Fred guy, the high pitched voice and everything sped up. Right, those were entertaining. It was kind of he, he put a little thought into it, but then he tried to like make a movie flop, like another movie flop, and now Mosh. Yeah, gone. He's like he he's always going to be known for that dude that had that high pitched voice being crazy on their internet. Mm-hmm. And it, I feel ba- I feel genuinely bad for these people who don't realize how much they messed up. And we even when we mentioned. we have to talk about this deep deeper on another on another podcast. We talk about the people that do corn how much they regret it later in life they don't realize that how much they're impacting themselves how they're ruining their lives and it's so sad because they're oh i'm making millions of dollars that's awesome right now your soul is gone Mm -hmm. you sold it you can never get it back you have one right and people like talk about selling souls on the internet all the time it's not like hey here sign this contract it's you were every time you make this kind of content, you're giving a little piece of yourself away, and eventually you'll have nothing left. I mean, short form content, if you're really trying to separate yourself from the rest of the field, doing something that is very short is not going to give you very far separation. You're just including yourself with the rest of the crowd, and that's you know, that's the point right there. I mean, it's it's set, just do some work. You, you want to become famous, okay? Everyone is good at something. Everyone has the ability to be the best version of themselves. Put that out there. That's why versions of like Andrew Tate and these alpha males have like have kind of became popular because men realize, wait a minute, I can do more. Like I can, I, I don't need to be a Cody Co. Nelk Boy type person. There is, there's more. Not saying what they're doing is right. I disagree with most of what they say, but it showed that there's more. That lifestyle was just you didn't see that that often. Continue to achieve. You have these – there's some really great content creators. In the workout space, there's a content creator called um, – his name's Sam Sulek. That Sam. dude is the most real person I've ever seen. I genuinely hope everything that he's doing is just him because you you watch him. Like he's counting his calories. He's about to eat. He goes, whoa, whoa. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't count how much uh, the calories for this piece of American cheese. And then he sneezed and goes – and goes, oh, bless you. Thank you. And he goes, you said bless you, right? Like, he's talking to the camera. He's just a genuine person. And he, one of the quickest growing fitness influencers ever to hit, like, a million followers. Yeah. And he's still the same person. Isn't he, like, 18 or something like he's that? He's really, really, really young. young. He's jacked. But the, the, those kind of people still exist. We still have good people in this world. But until the society as a whole wants to see good people, we're going to still continue to see garbage. Yeah. 
That's that's where the big change is. As a, as humans, we need to be okay. Where we're going is not good. We need to change something and look back at yourself and go, okay, I'm consuming six hours a day just garbage content. Maybe that's affecting my how I think. Maybe. Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, like we said before, if you're only inputting garbage, you're only going to output garbage. You are what you eat, in a certain sense. You are what you watch. You feed yourself content. Content is something that you do legitimately feed your brain. And yeah, we as a society, we need to come together and think, what am I actually watching here? When I'm watching like a street fight, like, okay, sure, this is entertaining. But why did I just watch five minutes of this? What did this actually do for me? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. And like we need to like we need there's got to be some sort of way that we can speak to everyone and just say stop feeding this. Like this is something that we legitimately rationalize and normalize. Like we allow it to come to the forefront and center of the uh the internet. That's the you know that's the beautiful thing and the really terrible thing about the algorithms because the algorithms do reward good content but they also reward what we inherently pick to see not necessarily what we want to see but what we pick and choose to see we do choose to see this absolute garbage content that keeps on getting thrown in front of us because you keep on watching it because you keep on commenting on it because you keep on sharing it and say like whoa look at what this guy did he just did something crazy right like you are the person that allows for that to come into your search page you you are the problem a lot of people have this 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 thought like, oh, I'm just one person. I won't have an effect on everything else. It just takes one person. Then I go, hey, I stopped doing this. You, why are you doing this? You go, wait, yeah. Then it's a domino effect. It just ripples, right? And that's what we need to do as, as a society is realize we are not well. We are really, really bad. Anybody can look out at this world right now and say this is not where we should be. It's really sad. I was had the thought the other day driving home. I'm like, why aren't we better right now? Why don't we have flying cars? Why don't we have all this crazy technology? It's because we're just, we've stopped pushing. We've, we're not innovating anymore. We're just on our phone. The vast majority of people are just on their phone. They're slaves to their work. They go work their nine to five, go home, watch TV, be on their phone. They're not trying to better themselves. Going through this journey of starting this podcast and working hard, and I've never felt so fulfilled. I'm working for eight hours a day at a job that's it's it's it is it's a job it's a nine to five job that work from home. After work, I'm able to go work on this podcast, edit videos, think about what I'm gonna what we're gonna be talking about next, posting stuff. That I get, yeah, we're not making any money, but it's so rewarding because I'm working towards something. Yeah, when I, I mean, see those those views come in, it's like yes, I I someone saw what I the hard work I put in. It's amazing. We as humans are called to be creative, right? Like we are creative just by nature. Like we do stuff. We produce stuff. We create things. We write beautiful books. We make beautiful movies. We paint beautiful pieces of art. And we stopped doing that because we allow other people to do it for us. The thing is like you need to as a person, like we need to just realize like I can do something. Right. This is part of the reason why you and I started this podcast, why we started to go on this journey was there are so many podcasts out there. And it's like it's kind of ironic for us to say, like, oh, let's start our own podcast. Yeah, there's so many podcasts out there. There's so many content creators out there. But why do you let other people create content that you think is terrible and not try to do it yourself and create something that's even better? Create beautiful things like this is this is something that I think we have to hit on more as a society is. There is the true, there is the good, and there is the beautiful. Why did we stop trying to obtain those things? Because there are things that are objectively beautiful. There are things that are objectively good. And there are things that are objectively true. And we stopped searching for those things, right? There's something that you as a viewer like to see on the internet. Why don't you try to find that? Why do you look at stuff that you hate? Why do you look at people that hate you as a viewer? Because there are a lot of people out there that are praying on your downfall, and you watch them willingly anyway. Yeah, 100%. And you you mentioned like why are we starting a podcast if everyone else already has podcasts? There's so many podcasts out there. The odds of us actually becoming like quote-unquote famous from this is very low, but we're not doing it because of that. When you believe in something 
and you're not standing up and trying to to show people this is what I believe in and, and why and how I'm enacting this in my life, what are you doing? As as Christians, as Catholics, we are called to to spread the word of God. We are called to lead by example, right? That song's like, they will know we are Christians by our, 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 our love. That's what our goal is, is to provide content to people who might not have seen these perspectives, never, never heard this, plant a little seed in their head and go, wait a minute, maybe they're right. Yeah, you mentioned this in in last in the last podcast. Mm-hmm. I really want to provide the best content for people. I want to get people on here, have great conversations, but not have any garbage in it. I don't want to to feed into what society is 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 watching right now. I don't want to be talking about bad stuff that people do with each other. I don't want to be talking about corn. I don't want to talk about drugs, all this other stuff. I want to talk about how we can be better as human beings and how we can continue to just be the best person we can be every single day. And that's a beautiful quote and also a beautiful way to end our podcast because we're definitely over time. Yeah, well, but, yeah, uh, we're definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely, this is a very emotional uh, conversation and I want to continue to hit these points because it's it's super important and I'm, I'm excited to continue to, to grow this podcast and, and have these kind of conversations. I'm going to give an actual, just really quick, I, I apologize. Kateri, this is your official shout out. I apologize for missing the last three podcasts. I had to hit, hit that for her. She's getting mad at me. Hey, shout out to Dexcron, the guy who keeps on commenting on our shorts. I love you, Dexcron. <laughs> is that who it is? Yeah, it's his name. Or his dude, hey, Dex. hey, shout out, dude. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, Dexcron. But yeah, this is this is podcast thirteen. Let me know what you think. If we're completely off on this subject, let us know. What are your opinions? Should you continue to death scroll? Should you get out and create something good and be a better person? You should subscribe. And that's podcast number thirteen. Yes, sir.